The Los Angeles County Museum of Art is the largest art museum in the western United States. With a very important and spectacular pre-Columbian ceramic collection that we needed to investigate. And now we're going to do a big exhibition with these objects here at LACMA. But there's not that much known about ancient Colombia. It's a challenge. We found the support to go to Colombia in a research trip and we really didn't know that this was going to change our perspective on life and our perspective of our own mission at LACMA. In the last episode, we looked at gold, but we also learned that there are other materials such as ceramics and cotton that are equally important to indigenous Colombians. And we also realized that there is another natural material that is very important to the Arawakos, um, and those are seashells. There are a lot of shell-shaped objects in the collection at LACMA, so now we're really curious about how shells were used and what they mean. Shells have a lot of symbolic meaning, but they also have practical uses. And one of those is connected to coca chewing. In the Andes, when you meet someone on the trail, you don't shake hands, you exchange coca leaves. And with the leaves, you have to change the pH of the mouth to facilitate the absorption of the alkaloid. In the Sierra, they use the seashells, seashells, but they do it in a very interesting way that creates an exothermic reaction. So they, they fire the seashells, and then put them in a vessel and add water and it creates an exothermic kind of magical, you yeah. seen it, because of course with the seashells they make the, the lime. lime. They, they add the lime into the mouth by licking a wooden stick and dipping that into the poporo where the lime powder is contained and then licking it again so that they can start chewing that together with the coca leaves. The lime powder brings out the active ingredients in coca leaves so that you actually get that effect of enhanced focus and perception as you would from caffeine. But one of the things about coca that is particularly moving is that it facilitates a kind of sense of well-being that facilitates camaraderie, which is why the mamos are always engaged. And so the whole time they have the poporo and that stick in their hands and they're kind of wiping the remaining bits of lime off at the rim of the poporo. And that's when everything is discussed about the next day and the, the problems are, are resolved. And, and, yeah, I mean, uh, it accompanies all of social life and all, all of decision life, making. Yeah. So what about the bigger shells, like the ones at LACMA? If you look at the conch shells in our collection, the ceramics are so perfect. They even imitate the internal structure of shells. So it has both. It is a shell transformed into ceramic, transformed into a musical instrument. In Bogota, we met up with Alex Herrera, who is a German-Peruvian archaeologist who studies ancient musical instruments. One of the things we wanted to know is whether those instruments made in ceramics are uh, a cop trying to copy the sound uh, of any particular marine shell. But what you get when you have ceramic instruments and you, get a, you increase the tonal range, you can uh, change the pitch by inserting the hand in a much better, much freer way as you could with a natural shell because obviously you, are, you, you, you can manipulate the shape. You've got particular voices, they would be distinctive. It feels perfect actually, like you feel like you can really hold it like this. It's so perfect. Do you think we can try to make a sound? I mean, exactly, if you're curious, you know, you can, I am. You can try. I, I, I'm going to try, let's see, I hope. It's so it's hard, difficult, huh? it's hard. But when it, when it gets really exciting is when you get several instruments together. 
because then you get uh, two kinds two kinds of things you get acoustic uh, effects and psychoacoustic effects we thought the psychoacoustic effects were particularly interesting because they're very disorientating you can't it's a sound that you can't place because it's not there it's produced by your brain and so you get this idea of a presence you can feel but you can't pinpoint a, a vibrate an undulation a vibration in the air which is there, but you can't place it. It's, it's very potent, and we, what we believe is that that's what the, they were trying to achieve. What we have from 16th century documents, uh, what are Chilean chronicles from the central Andes, is that different communities are walking and coming together. And they're walking over days to venerate their ancestors at particular times of the years. And as they would come together, different communities or different sections of the same community, as they would come together, there is a point when they will finally be able to produce these sound effects I was talking about. And we believe this would have been the climax, the climatic moment of this the ceremony. Alex's research is in Peru but it's really interesting to consider those same ideas for ancient Colombia. While we were in Bogota, we went to the Museo de Arqueología Marqués de San Jorge, which is an archaeology museum, and we were introduced to Victoriano, who is from the NASA or Pais tribe, and he had collaborated with them on a small exhibition. He introduced himself as an hombre de conocimiento, so a man of knowledge, and he agreed to share some of that knowledge with us. Nosotros los aborígenes somos un poco celosos en contar toda la información acerca de cómo y por qué se hicieron y se elaboraron artefactos como estos que ustedes pueden observar aquí. Yo cuando iba a permitirse la eh, exposición de, 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 de lo que hoy hay aquí, tuve que darles licor con plantas medicinales. Y ellas, es, ellas han recibido, han tomado y están tranquilas aquí. Y en muchos museos hay muchos artefactos que cumplieron en su momento su misión. ¿sí? Y son seres vivos, hay, hay espíritu viviente, ¿sí? Entonces yo alcanzo a darme cuenta que ellos claman hasta cuándo, por qué. So Victoriano repeated what Mama Camila had told us in our first meeting, which is that these are living beings with a living spirit, and for this exhibition, for them to be at ease, he gave them medicinal plants and alcohol. A lot of the pieces that were in that exhibition were musical instruments, and that included graters, for example. He made us aware of the fact that graters make a noise, and he considered that as part of sound and music, which I hadn't considered before. This is a raspador, just like Victoriano was saying. So this is... Oh, yeah, exactly. Do you want to play it? Entonces, eh, el paso, el son de paso, el son de paso es para poner en orden o poner en alerta a toda la comarca para empezar alguna actividad, ¿sí? bien sea para empezar a cocinar una gran olla comunitaria para que todos coman. ¿sí? Y en el proceso mismo de la, elabora, de, de la cocción de los alimentos hay sones musicales 
y en el proceso de recibir la comida hay sones de música porque de música nosotros sabemos porque la naturaleza nos ha enseñado ¿sí? entonces la música que uno escucha viene de las entrañas mismas de la naturaleza what really struck me about what he said is that he talks about music accompanying in everything the rising of the sun the setting of the sun you know the running of the river the preparing of food all of that is accompanied by sound and music so he talks about the birds that sing in the morning you know the birds that sing at night or the frogs or crickets that make noise at night you know all of that is music and music accompanies all of life por ejemplo este sonido es espectacular chao escuchamos ese ese es el charcha Soy Luis Fernando Franco, soy compositor, eh, productor musical. Eh, hace pues, más de 30 años eh, vengo estudiando eh, las ocarinas. An ocarina is a small musical instrument, um, and they're often shaped like animals or shells. I think you would play it like here, you know. Ajá. Uh -huh. Uf. It just plays, like, I mean, this is like 2,000 years old, and it just, it just... Sí, las ocarinas la utilizaban... Pues hoy en día hay pocos en las sierras. Bueno, por allá arriba hay forma de tigres, hay forma de... O sea, muchos los animales que hay se encuentran hoy en día, pero eso lo, está, lo tenemos guardado en unos sitios muy muy sagrados, ya que solamente pueden utilizar ciertas personas que tengan esa capacidad de utilizar las ocarinas, solamente lo usan. Dejar un ocarino hoy en día acá en este mundo para que pudiéramos revivir a una especie que está en peligro de extinción o cuando uno no, no sabe qué hay que no sabe qué hay que hacer con unas aves que llegas heridas entonces esos ocarinas es para ayudar a revivir los aves The Arawakos, like a lot of indigenous tribes in the Americas, encode their knowledge in myths and stories that to us sometimes sound like superstition. But as we're going to find out, there is real knowledge and real reasoning behind those stories. Francisco told us that they use the ocarinas to help heal wounded animals and even to help them not go extinct. I mean, as a concept, that's huge. They actually can heal some of the damage that has been done through using music. The Arawakos, as the other pueblos of the Sierra Nevada, are in dialogue with nature. They really believe that they help nature to be kept in balance. They agreed to collaborate with us, but also requested our help. So. What is our role in this? And what the mammals are telling us is that not just the world is alive, but that human beings are not the problem, we are the solution. 